Live? We Action. Are live. Action. We're live with Ty Landis, owner of Pulp. Is it Pulp and Juice? What's it? Pulp? Pulp Juice and Smoothie Bar. Yeah. Bar. In you on the Boardman and the and, or Poland and the Boardman slash Canfield one, right? Yeah. So it's the most confusing thing ever because, like, I was, I was like, we can't name the Poland one Boardman Part Two. <laughs> so we had to it's close to Poland, so we just made it Poland. But it's still super confusing to customers. So yeah, the Boardman and the Poland one, those two are ours. And um, there's one in Niles that's not ours, but we have we have those two. And um, yeah, doing good so far. Yeah, is this a, how it's, you, it's how a you franchise. Think? Is it a franchise then? It's a franchise. There's 35, I think now. First one was wow. in Kent, 2004. So the guy only had it, the intention of just having that one, and then it just slowly slowly started building as people bought into the franchise. I think our boardman store was like the 27th or 28th. So um, nice. a good progression for the, yeah, for the franchise. What, how did you get into it? Why did you get into it? Did you just decide you wanted to? We, the business model is good compared to like a Smoothie King. And my wife had it before my girlfriend at the time in Kent because she went there. She's like, I think one would be good here. So I was like, screw it. Let's do it because I'm, Still working for WFMJ part time as a film critic, and I knew I would never get a full time gig there. So I was like, "Hell yeah, I could do. I could scratch my itch doing movie reviews at WFMJ, and I could run the store." And that was it. And it's been successful and rewarding ever since. Since we started the first one, we're, yeah, we're gonna movie we're movie gonna talk movie. about the movie thing later. Yeah, I know it's is, coming. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited to dig in. Yeah, I I um I turn on the Saturday news and I just <laughs> I'm just watching it. And I'm like. That's the pulp guy. That that's the guy who owns pulp. But, I'll see. Yeah, I'll see. Job, I'll man. see people. Thank you. I'll see people at Giant Eagle, and I know they'll. I'll just be like, that. That's not me. I get that all the time. If I'm in a rush, I just don't want to get locked into a conversation. <laughs> like that is not me. I promise you. Do, you, do anybody yeah, around for an autograph yet? Not yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I'm not, not. I'm not at that level yet, but we'll see. Yeah, we got we got the Paulo. Andrew DePaulo coming on Thursday, so that'll be fun. Oh, nice, yeah. All of your everyone, so. Yeah, he'll be good. Yeah, he'll be. Real oh, are you every Are you every Saturday with the movie thing? So you do you do how How does this happen? Like, how do you go from a Where are you from? I mean, how do you open up a juicy bar and then you're a movie critic? I mean, that's that's crazy. Yeah, so just a journalism major in um, college, um, writing was my thing, and then the broadcast side, I didn't really have any interest or insight into until WFMJ started their weekend show. I think it was six or seven years ago now. And I sort of had a connection there. Um, a woman who works in the marketing, she's like, Hey, they're starting this weekend show. They're trying to get a film critic. Do you want to you know, audition for it? I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. So I did like a faux review from my home. sort of like how we're doing now. I recorded it, sent it in. That was it. And six years later, I'm still doing it. Since then, I've I've created a fancy football segment that I do that during the NFL season on Sundays. And I had a pop culture segment I was doing every Monday, but I've dropped that just because my schedule got too hectic. But the broadcasting thing, as long as you – since I had no experience, as long as you know what you're talking about, sort of being on TV came natural. As long as you know your, you know, your crap, um, that became easy. It, was, it wasn't that hard of a transition. But – I love it. I still have time to do it, so I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can you know, fit it in. So it's been fun. Yeah. Um, I think is it is it his mic, Luke? That's it's yours. Crazy feedback. It's totally yours. Is it me? I mu- I muted you and it went away. So. Okay. I, my laptop just came up, so I'm going to switch over to that. Keep talking. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Okay. So he's gone. So 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 yeah. The uh, the the movie critic part is, is crazy to me. So like. You apply, you get the mute movie critic part. You go on the news, which which is kind of I mean, it's a big deal. So 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 how? Yeah. W- what sort of resume do you have? I, I I watch every every movie movie possible. Like I have my yeah. infinity my infinity power shirt <laughs> on from Avengers. I mean, I'm a, I have I have Star Wars tattoos. I mean, I'm I am I am a movie nerd like you wouldn't believe. What uh, I mean, what what makes you? A movie critic. Well, did you you went to school for journalism. So so what else? I mean, watch a bunch of movies. Yeah, I mean, the the term is so loose now. I mean, you know, the, the, what what 
what classifies. I'm going to interrupt you. Strawberry. Strawberry from the pulp is delicious. Good. Um, All right. No, you're good. Journalism background in high school. Um, went to Kent State my freshman year. No film degree there. They didn't offer it. Came back to YSU, still major in journalism. Took a bunch of film classes. But at that point, I was already writing for you know different websites and my own blog. Then I, um, out, out of college, attended the Toronto Film Festival three years in a row. Wrote about that for a website out of Canada called Sound on Sight. Wrote for some other websites online. And then it was always writing until the TV thing came up. So that was the background, you know, studied film, studied journalism. And that was basically my end. And as I mentioned, comfortable talking about it, you know, that's as long as you, as long as I found myself comfortable on TV, the rest yeah. sort of came natural, even though I had no broadcast experience before I did, you know, before I joined a weekend show. Favorite. Okay. So, so now we're going to get into the good stuff. So, so favorite. <laughs> Can I, can I just say favorite movie, favorite sci-fi movie? I, see, I'm a sci-fi nerd, so what's your favorite sci-fi? Or, I mean, it, do you break it down like that, or can you give me no, top it's, five? You no, know, it's more directors with me. Like, I was talking with your brother the other day, and he's like, you know, what do you like? I'm like, my tastes have changed, so it's more directors with me than actual movie, just because my oh. tastes have changed. So, a lot, like, I'll, I'll watch anything. Everyone's like, well, what do you like? I'll, I'll watch anything is cool as long as it's good. Um, yeah. But sci-fi, you know, i it's hard to think of a top one. I, it goes more by directors with me. It's like Terrence yeah, let me Malick. Hear, let me hear directors. Yeah, Terrence Malick. He's just, you know, Tree of Life, Thin Red Line. Uh, Michael Mann, even though he's not making a lot of movies now. You know, uh, Heat, The Insider. Yeah, fantastic. Collateral, Thief. Um, a bunch of foreign directors, obscure yeah. ones that I won't that I won't bore you with. But for me, it's more <laughs> it's more directors, and it's it's tough now. You know, going on the news and reviewing all this mainstream stuff because it's all crap now. There's yeah. the main, mainstream cinema, and it could it could die now with how this oh. virus is playing out. So, the blockbusters and the Marvel movies and the kids movies are the things that are going to hang on. Everything streaming now is going to be could be the death of mainstream middle budget, you know, mid budget movies. It's it's interesting to see, but it's also painful as well. Scorsese is, is another director I didn't mention. Oh, you know, the um, Irishman. Was the, I, the Irishman that released on Netflix was just I I loved it. I mean, it was a yeah. long movie. I loved the Irishman. Um, I mean, it's a good fellows is a freaking staple in, in, my, yeah. in my repertoire. So, um, but, oh, go ahead. No, it's just eight out of 10 movies I see in the theater now and all crap. And I, and I go on TV and what's great about the show is WFMJ is they give me the freedom to be brutally honest, Yeah, which is awesome for me because I, I, I just, I wouldn't be doing it if I had to sugarcoat things or if they sort of, you know, trimmed my style per se, but it's, Every eight out of ten movies now, it's 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 mostly crap. So you, when you find those two or three good ones, it, it's when you find those two or three good ones, it's it's fun to talk about and uh, share with people on TV or or in person. I I have a good question for you. What do you think of the Joker, Joker or Joker? Yeah, it, it was okay. Like I I love Joaquin yeah. and yeah. you know with Oscars, like he's he's had six or seven performances that are better than that. But sometimes they don't op, they don't usually reward the the best role he's in. It's kind of like he's due award. I thought it was right, okay. It's, right. it's, mim it's, it's trying to be taxi driver, but as, as, as a comic book movie, right. um, but not crazy about it, but I did like watching him in that, you know, sort of, I, you know, I, gaunt I, and 90 yeah. pounds. And yeah, it was an entertaining movie to me. I, I mean, it, there were parts that I was like, oh my God, is this thing ever going to end? You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, I, I thought it was great. And, and, you know, people were like, oh, best movie ever, best actor ever. It, it was kind of like, uh, what was the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? Uh, the Reverend or Rev, Rev, Revit? Or what was also, the one where he got mauled by a bear? Also, also hated that one. Did you? Yeah. I, I, and everyone's like, oh, it's the best. I was like, I, I was bored. Again, I liked, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bane from Batman in that movie. He was fantastic in the movie himself yeah. i like watching him if you can understand him talking um, right what's his name i can't tom hardy. His name. tom hardy yeah exactly i thought he was great in it if you can understand him and isaac That's, always says you, you can't just, hear you, him. Did, you just nailed it dicaprio yep. should have won for seven other movies not the reverence yep. Yep. Joaquin, that's how it goes sometimes so you sort of know that going in and then you just drank a lot of alcohol during the oscars and this just ends up being a joke but that's <laughs> sort of that's sort of how it goes Right here, here comes my little brother. There he is. There we go. Wow! Finally, Dude, finally. Your mic, your mic sucked when it was on. It was terrible. <laughs> was I mean, it terrible? I'm so oh, sorry. I thought, I thought it was. 
I thought it was Ty, and then yeah, it was yeah. awful. It was my phone. I my computer. That's what happens when you don't uh, update your laptop yeah. for like kale, kale, two, two months, kale this time. I, I love it. Kale. He's just trying them all. I love it. Are you are you just trying all of them? Did you try the the chocolate peanut butter? Well, I've been drinking that all night since it was in my refrigerator. It's oh, really? Fast. And the rat, the three berry. That one's Shelby's favorite. Is that way three berry? Is that strawberry? Three berry. Hold on. Yeah. See, I got these three two. Berry. That's kale. It's got a little green look to it. I threw uh, I threw a, a fat burner in the in the in the kale one for you there, big guy. <laughs> you're so gonna wait. need a whole lot of that. Hey, Ty, you're gonna have to keep up with Isaac and I. We like jump around like crazy on on this. No, I, on this, I, this is my first meeting, so I'm like, this is fun. I, I wish I hope we can do this for three hours, but we might lose some viewers here. So yeah, oh, dude, we got I got nothing but so my kids are asleep. Wipe <laughs> out, we're good. We're good. So so tell me, kale. This this kale. Now this is interesting. Again, you're the juicy master. You open up a juicy juicy stores and Paul, juicy master. I mean, it's a juicy master. He is. I like. Oh like my one, god! This is what I picture. Juice, juice master, maybe. This is what I. This is what I picture. I picture him one day. He bought out a blender and he made something. He had like fruit left over, and he's like, oh, and then he's like, I gotta open up a store, right? Is that how what's that great? Works? It, no, no. What's great is I never thought I'd be doing opening one of these in a million years, but it's just yeah. one of those things where you start talking with your significant other. She believes in it. And I'm just working part-time at WFMJ. I'm not going to get a full-time gig there. So I'm like, okay, first we need to investigate this. I don't want to run a store where the product is just meh. Right. Yeah. So you try, you go to the cranberry one. That's the closest one. We drove up there, try a bunch of crap. I'm like, okay, let's freaking do this. And that was it. I, I don't sit at home ever before opening this and make smoothies or juices. And then now it's my life and it's and now it's my life and it's awesome. So it goes to show you how nothing is on your radar and then you end up doing it out of nowhere and end up loving it, which is awesome. Yeah. See that, that, that is, that's, that's fantastic. So your wife, does she work at the store too? Sometimes she works full time at Allstate now, but since we're down employees now, um, her, she works from home. She can pitch in here and there, but it's all her and I, and you know, the infrastructure of the store is great and we have a disciplined crew and it's not a free for all. And they come in knowing that we make sure they know that. And that's why our stores run just like clockwork. It's great. Everyone loves working there. It's like a fan, like these girls are my family, high school girls, college girls. And it's, it's super rewarding. Like I mentioned earlier. Fantastic. Um, Isaac, when you were gone, we were talking about movies and he is, he is so be he is like directors. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, what do you think of Marvel? And he's like, yeah, it's big time, whatever. And he's talking about yeah. porn film. Huh? It's like another, another yeah. level. Oh yeah. I'm sure. I'm All sure. Right. Hey, oh, well, we you, were just, you were just reviewing movies that were in the theater at the time, I think is what you were doing. Right. On Yeah. That's what I still do. But now, um, I record myself at home talking about, you know, what's new on Netflix or Hulu and then just record that, send it over, send the video over and then they'll just play that on the weekend show. But even when, if, if theaters open up soon, I still have a, I'm not going to feel comfortable going, but if it gets crazy here and they start opening stuff up, I'm not, I'm not going to feel too comfortable sitting yeah. in there with a bunch of, you know, whomever. And I'm just not, not there yet. What about yeah. the store? You worried about the store at all? And like, I mean, you have protection up at the at the store. You have two stores at the stores for the COVID. Yeah, I mean, there's always a worry, but I mean, masks, gloves. We're using sanitize sanitizing the store down. All the girls are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like I mentioned, it's not a free for all. Where they're not taking it seriously. Everyone's taking it seriously. Head thermometers when they come in, taking their temperature and. We, we tell them, you know, if you guys aren't, don't feel comfortable working, don't come in. If you are feeling ill before a shift, stay home. We'll get someone to cover the shift. And so far, so good. Yeah, that's that's definitely scary. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. You know, they're going to have a bunch of the uh, retail stores. You being a, re a restaurant, or you have food. Uh, Isaac was eating a salad today. It looked fantastic, too. So you have food there, too. So have you been doing carryout or people coming in? Or how's that been? How's that delivery? Well, no, so yeah, we, we have we have seating at both of the stores. Obviously, we've moved all of that out. But okay. even before the virus hit, 80% of our sales is carry out anyways. People are just coming in quick and efficient and then just taking their stuff. So we just implemented uh, DoorDash at our Boardman store. So nice. that makes things even easier for the customer. Um, our Poland store, we'll probably get that in the next couple months. But as I mentioned earlier, 
even before the virus, everyone is just, you'll get those people who hang out, especially when it's nice out or if they just want to hang out and study and, you know, hang out for a little bit. But 90% of it is just people coming in quick and then just heading out the door. Fantastic. Um, what a, um, I'm trying to think. So, so you have that. So DoorDash. I mean, do you get a lot of that at the Borman store? Are people DoorDashing for a smooth for a, for a, uh, yeah. smoothie? So we just re- we obviously we just implemented it Monday. Um, oh wow! I think we yeah, it's brand new. We've had we had we've had only 25 orders in two days, but still, people don't know we have it yet. So I think it'll blow up rather quick um, once people know we have it. I'm going to say Pulp and Boardman now offering DoorDash. Look at this advertising. That's awesome. Look at there it. There we go. The, 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 the two people, like, it's going from two to ten every now and then watching it. Okay, <laughs> DoorDash this thing. So uh, my question, why did you um, – my girlfriend loved the antioxidant flavor. Yeah. And then you guys got rid of it. What, what was we that? Got, was it too unhealthy? Yeah. No, we, yes and no. We we got rid of it for a more healthy alternative. So like a more nutritious um, juice, and yeah. we actually put we put real acai in it now. Um, before it was just more is. like a before it's just like an organic or, organic raspberry sorbet. Uh, but there's more premium ingredients in it now than there than there was before. So okay, I like cool. the newer I like the newer version better. But man, we we pissed some people off getting rid of that. I had to yeah, you did. Angry. They, they they were coming to trying to forget my address and calling me in the middle of the night, threatening me and all this stuff. <laughs> so I mean, um, how, how many customers the new do you get one? a day? Oh, oh sorry. I was like, go ahead, buddy. I said, uh, what's the new one called? The new an- version of the antioxidant berry. The ultimate acai. Ultimate acai. Okay. I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to try that. I'll have to try it's, it. It's good stuff. I am not a juicy person, Ty. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've never been to your stores. I don't, I mean, I'm just being honest with them. I mean, I am like a 40 year old curmudgeon. I went fishing the last three days. I just don't do juices. I'm going to tell you what the kale one, the kale one, the smoothie kale is fantastic. It is. Now, how is it green? From- it's green and it tastes like, uh, pineapples. Well, there's pineapple sorbet in it, which is dairy free and mangoes and the pineapple juice and the kale. Give you that yeah. color. How many calories? Do you know how many calories off the top of your head? For that one, for that small, it's probably two twenty. So it's I nailed that, Luke. A lot not of, much a lot at sugar. all. No added sugar. The sugar is just coming from the real juice and the fruit. No added sugar in anything. And the peanut wow. butter one. Calories. This, that's what this one is. I have three over here. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. This because this one's really good. Small is probably four hundred ish. That's a that's like that's, that's a that's a that's a meal right there. So yeah. yeah. And that's the one I like, Isaac. Go figure. And then I did the um, I do the pea protein in that one. I get that one most of the time. I do the pea protein instead of the whey because the whey number one hurts my stomach and it breaks me out. So I like the yeah. the pea instead. This yeah. this, this peanut, peanut what was it, Isaac? Peanut butter chocolate protein chocolate yeah. packer. Protein packer is what it's called. Yeah. Protein packer. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's a good we one. That's that's our second highest on the whole menu. So we. Wow. Almond milk it, and peanut butter all day. Does it have yeah. whey in it? No, I, I that's I switched it out. I switched the whey out for the pea protein. Should have got me some whey, man. I go hit the hit the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. And then um I think I got you something. I got you some other um what are they called? Not the, the fat burner or the stress relief. What are those called? Ty? Enhancers. The enhancers. enhancers. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um I got you an enhancer in the three berry too. That's this one. Three berries, the red one. Yeah, but I can't remember which one I got. You. It was like stress relief or something. I forget. <laughs> there you go. So again, so, again. so Ty, how many calories do I have right here? How am I doing with your healthy juice bar? You're good. You probably only got about seven fifty or eight in those three. And how could you? How could you beat that? <laughs> oh man, you're you're good to go. You got it, dude. You got it. Oh man, it's that kale. You mix, <laughs> mix all three of them. Can you still taste the kale? I don't, taste, I don't taste any kale. You're a mess, dude. You're a mess. So, I, the, I, the kale, I'm telling you, I think I like the kale the best. I don't understand. That's good. And I actually saw him like putting kale on that thing, too. I really do. I think the kale, I'm sorry, man. I'm just surprised. It's yeah. green. Um, well, well, good job on this. That, that's fantastic. Anybody watching the five people watching this? Wonderful thing. Make sure you guys go check it out. Uh, we'll get, check we'll out get more people over time. I'm not worried about it. We but. actually 
Ty, we had like a thousand people on uh, our first one with DJ Yokely uh, from wow. YSN. Um, I think we had seven or eight, six or seven hundred with uh, uh, Ryan Alessio from uh, the old Rock One Hundred Three last week, who's also people a loan officer. Fun. Before. He's also a loan officer, so I must have given bad reviews to a lot of movies that people like over time. That's what I happens, have... and they just they don't listen to me. And then they're just like, "Screw this guy! He's, what does he know?" What's a what's a recent movie that you hated? I need some like I need movies I need to see. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, oh man, All right, he, he didn't like Joker, Isaac. He didn't like. I see. Well, do you I, like I, comic book? Like, do you like comic books? Did you read comic books at all? Like, that's not how the Joker is, but that's right. just my I, opinion. The Marvel movies in the DC, the, all the Marvel, it, it's. I'm sort of just fatigued by all of it at this point. Mm-hmm. Um. There's some that are cool, the ones that are sort of just like standalone things where there's an actual ending and the, the end of the movie is not just leading you into the next one. Like yeah. I'm, now I'm actually, as I say that, I'm failing to think of the ones I'm talking about. But um, those are the I guess those are the ones I enjoy the most. Well, like, um, how do you feel about Christopher? Was it Christopher Nolan's Batman movies? Like, those were good, right? Oh, they're gosh. they're fine. No, no, no. They're so like self serious. I I like like the Batman Returns where it's like kinky yeah. and Danny yeah. DeVito driving around a penguin, a yellow penguin, screaming and <laughs> pop up Lucas and yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. And it's in those are the ones I like. I mean the the the, the ones with Val Kilmer and Clooney are obviously garbage, but I like oh. the, I like the Mike I like the Michael Keaton ones the best. Did you ever see those, Isaac? The Michael Keaton ones. Um, yeah, I think like one of them. It was a long time ago, though, yeah, man. Rewatch, re-watch, re-watch, re-watch Batman Returns. It's more twisted than than, than people think. Yeah, oh, Batman Returns of the Penguins, fantastic. I like that better than the first one. And now the new one with Pattinson and um, uh, Paul Dano, and I don't know. It could be cool, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Well, okay, so how do you feel about? Oh, go ahead, Luke. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask him about. Uh, so I thought this one was good. Uh, Spider-Man into the, uh, what was that? Spider-Man into the verse or what, the one the with, uh, yeah, what it was cool. that? cause that got really was, good reviews. It was cool. Seeing that in the theater in 3d was cool. Would oh, I watch fantastic. it again? Probably not, but I dug it for what it was. Like I liked it. They a little bit innovative. They're adding more dimensions to it rather than just the typical nerdy kid and the, the white nerdy kid. And, has a mm-hmm. crush on a girl and you know, we know where it's going to yeah. be. But that was cool. It, it was sort of avant garde almost in like it's, it's color scheme. And it's, it was like a comic book reading a comic book basically. Yeah. Give me a headache watching that in yeah. 3d yeah. and in a movie theater, but it was real good. It was You're colorblind too. Isaac. So maybe I am like- colorblind. I'm blind in my right <laughs> eye. Like I have all kinds of problems, but um, what, uh, what was the movie watched on Netflix with the elevator going up and down, Isaac um, elevator going up and down the, the, in the prison. I no, you oh. told me to watch that. I don't know what oh. that is. Did you watch? You know, know what I'm talking about, Ty? Hold on, I gotta yeah, but I can't think of the name. Did you watch it? I, what I, about no, I uh, it. sci-fi? Like, have you seen? Like, we love sci-fi. Uh, Ex Machina. Did you see that one? I've seen it. Well, that's don't love one. it. I don't love it. Only be I don't know. It's just that 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 director Alex Garland. So he did he did Annihilation too, which I liked a little bit better. Did you see Annihilation? It, <laughs> I didn't like know. it, I, it was okay. okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the platform. What, we just, what, you just we say? what was the one you just brought up? Oh, Xbox, Mark, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I like um, Oscar Isaac, but I thought inter- I knew where it was going. Okay, I thought I knew it was Interstellar. Sorry. Tie. Interstellar. <laughs> That's a great one. All right, so. With the Nolan movies, I'm real – Nolan, <laughs> not the biggest fan, but Interstellar is so – are we allowed to swear on here? Yeah, uh, go crazy. Yeah, whatever. Go crazy. Okay. Yeah, I, no, I won't do it. That movie is just so <laughs> gonzo that you end up just liking it even though – like him falling it down a bookcase and talking to his daughter. Like, I like the goofy Max – in the, the, the score to that movie, the soundtrack, how freaking loud it is. Oh, like the bombast fantastic. of it. I yeah, do like that crazy. movie. Dunkirk, I know it's not sci-fi, but he did that as well. Not as crazy about that. Inception, yeah. Inception is cool. Like when you're in college and like you're mm-hmm. you're in college, and then it's not as good anymore. But his yeah. new movie coming out this summer, Tenet, Tenet, looks really cool. But that's his movies. The trailers always yeah. look badass, and then when you see it, you're like, oh, you know, not as good as the trailer. Have you ever watched the South Park episode making fun of Inception? <laughs> I have not, but now I know what I'm doing. It's, it's, basically just, 
it is basically just South Park making fun of it, saying that <laughs> just because something's super complicated doesn't make it cool. It, it, it's hilarious <laughs> that what they go into about it. But um, yeah, um, back to the superhero movies though. I was talking to <laughs> I was talking to a professor, history of motion pictures professor that I was catching up with, and um, from YSU. And he just basically said with superhero movies, he really hopes we don't become the generation of just too many superhero movies. You know, we are. It's, it's, like we are. It's already here. Yeah. We're screwed. That's why I was talking to your brother when you were away. The mid budget movie for that make that's on a budget of 20 or 30 million no longer exists. All the movies that came out in the nineties, <clears throat> yeah. movie stars, movie stars don't exist anymore. Anyway, it's everything's just branded. So I think we're screwed. And like everything's just going to go to the good directors now. We're going to either have to get in TV, which sucks, which can be good, but you know you want to see their movie on the big screen and them doing movies rather than seasons of TV. Some people have been good at it, but it's all going to go to Netflix and Hulu and everything. And then the the the, the mainstream movies that come on theaters are just going to be comic book movies, movies for kids, and reboots and sequels, and that's it. Which is depressing to me. Yeah, yeah, you brought up is. an interesting point because I was thinking this watching uh, – we watched The Invisible Man that came out um, just because there was nothing else to watch on TV. So that was that basically – wasn't bad. No, it, it wasn't, wasn't bad at all. But it was it's, cool. That's supposed to be a release in theaters. They charge you yeah. 19 bucks or whatever it is to watch the movie for one night. I mean, after this COVID thing's over, what's to stop them to, from keeping to do, you know, from doing that? I, I guess I, I kind of like sitting at home because I have three kids. I can't go out every Friday night. I like watching the movies. I don't like waiting. So it's kind of, I'm wondering if that's the way this is going to go. If it's going to keep going down that road. Well, the model is more beneficial for the consumer because you go to the movies with your wife and your three kids. What is that? Forty bucks? Fifty oh, bucks? Ridiculous! Yeah, there's. Well, yeah, right, exactly. So you 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 buy it at home for twenty bucks. You're saving money, but it's the the theaters and the the theaters are who trouble now. It's not the consumer is going to be fine. The consumer is always fine, especially with Netflix. That's why it's mm -hmm. off the charts. But I, it's going to get pretty. It's going to get pretty dangerous. It's it's pretty bad. That's why when Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out, I'm like, Tarantino gets it. This is one of like the last movies of this kind that's going to be shown in the theater. He knows that the eighty to ninety million dollar movie that's not a comic book movie that's not animated movie yeah. breed that breed of movie is dying quickly and it's it sucks. The last twenty minutes of that movie were just insane. I don't look. You didn't see that, did you? Which one? Which one? Um, what was the Hollywood? Oh my gosh! Oh, I never saw that. that. No. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy, yeah. crazy movie. Um, the only movie that I really saw in the movie theater that I thought was almost bad when I watched it again at home was Av the Avatar movie. The Avatar movie, like, when they go to the other planet. They, it made, like, a bazillion dollars, though. A bazillion dollars. Well, it's the only movie I've watched in 3D, and I was like, well, this is actually, like, a good, crazy use of 3D, but... And I didn't think it was that good of a movie. Four more one. of those. I think three or four more of those coming out in the next like. Two, yeah, four, it might be two. overkill, but. Oh, they're I mean, gonna overkill was, everything, man. Yeah, true. They can get their money, but. I'm trying to think what other movies we can annoy Ty about. Ty, so, like, older is that what you're like? Are you into like older movies, like Good, Bad, I mean, the I'll, Ugly? I'll watch anything. Like now, like I've seen all the newer stuff. Oh. Like I've been, do I've seen everything since I've been you know, taking reviewing seriously for the last, I don't know, eight, nine years. So I've seen everything new. So basically now it's trying to catch up on blind spots, you know, stuff from the sixties and seventies and wow, that's awesome. avant guard stuff and obscure stuff. That's just, in, in, you know, finding out different directors who I know are good, but I haven't seen some of their stuff before, whether they're domestic or foreign. It's, it's basically just playing catch up now with stuff I know is supposed to be good, but I just haven't seen yet. Wow. What are some movies like I, I I need I need Ty's top ten or something Ty's top three. Oh, like dude, he's, to we're gonna we're gonna be Ty. We're gonna be getting some foreign films, aren't we? What do we got? No, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bore because that's that's a waste because no one wants to hear that, right? Um, <laughs> so I was telling your I was telling uh, Luke, it's just for me, it's just directors, um, basically directors. Okay, so, so any of their work, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm just trying to think. Like everyone's seen the Scorsese's and the Tarantino and the Paul Thomas Anderson movies and all that stuff. So those are all well known. But I don't know. You you go back and you watch stuff like, you know, you revisit Eyes Wide Shut, the Kubrick movie from '99, the last movie he made before he died. Genius, yeah. three hours. The the forget the length, right but it's down. you just revisit that stuff and you just like I mentioned, digging into directors and revisiting stuff that you yeah. saw when you were. 16 or 17 that you didn't quite like or you didn't quite get and you rewatch it now and you know as you as you get older taste change so that's it that's that's sort of the, the mode I'm going through now I I know what I like and of course 5 years from now my taste could still change because that's sort of the fun of it life experiences change who you are yeah wow. I, yeah, I was shut. Tom Cruise. There's no way you saw that movie. Either. I was five. I was five when that movie came out. So now I, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> I wrote it down. I'm watching it. I'm gonna watch it. Uh, is it? Tom is it on Netflix? And, Isaac, it does have a, a, It does have a little bit of a sci-fi twist to it too, because we're both nerds. So it, it, it. Well, that's Nicole Kidman too, I believe. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Ty, yeah, that was uh, that was that was a weird movie, Isaac. You you would probably like that. It's like a movie you want to put on at like midnight when you're drinking, like which is it's like a one of those good late night movies you could just see, you know, soak into because the movie like, feels like a nightmare almost. Um, but I don't know, there, there's so much stuff I could say. I just don't want to bore people with all the movies that everyone's already but seen. I don't bored. know. You know, people want to hear it from the critic. What can they watch that the, that the you know, critic thinks is good? You know. Okay, you know, you know what movies are underrated, and this they're newer. The horror movies, the unfriended movies, which are kind of like set up like how we're talking now. The, like the kids on the computer. They're those good movies that no one has really seen. The second one's even better than the first one, but they're probably streaming on Netflix. Those movies sort of look like a joke when they came out, but those are pretty damn good at what they're trying to do. What's the those movies? I think I might have just, seen one just, of them. The first one's almost like a ghost in the machine is haunting these kids, you know, from yeah, – but it I, uses all of these – it uses all of these interfaces like Spotify and Facebook and web messaging, and it, it does some nifty tricks with those. But the second one gets into, like, the dark web – yeah, and it's just a it's just a nasty, cruel movie that it gets a lot right for being ninety minutes. It's it does a lot right, and it's just movies that were not they weren't shit on when they came out. They got decent reviews, but movies people yeah. wouldn't think were good that are actually they they're really they're um they do easy stuff really well is the best way to put it. Hmm. Yeah, I think Shelby and I watched that. What year? Do you remember what year that was, or who was in it? There's, it's all there's the no one. no one really. The second one came out in 2018. I think the first one came out in 2015. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. Here's another one. It's on. It's on Amazon. It's on. It's on Amazon Prime. It's called First Reformed with Ethan Hawke. Okay, came out two years ago. He's he's basically I've just playing. A, heard of that one? It's a little slow, but you'll be sucked into it if you get through the first 30 minutes. If you get through the first 30, 45 minutes, you'll be sucked in. He's basically just a pastor of a small church in upstate New York, and he starts to spiral out of control after he sort of has this encounter with this unstable environmental activist, and it goes to some really dark places. The last 20 minutes are sort of unforgettable, but that's another movie Came out a couple years ago. Great reviews. He was almost nominated for Best Actor, but a lot of people just didn't see the movie, but it's on Amazon Prime now. Um, huh. It's really awesome. All right. I'm totally, totally watching these. Um, Isaac, did you ever see It Comes at Night? Comes at Night? I don't think so. Um, that's. Do you ever see that, Ty? H- hated it. Hated it. <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> Gosh, darn critics don't know <laughs> nothing. What about uh, 1408? Horror movie where he's in the hotel room. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson and Cusack. I haven't seen that since high school, but I remember liking it. I just oh, haven't seen it in forever. That was a Watch great it one. That was a yeah. great one. I think I, how many times I've watched I've watched I think fifteen times. It's the my song, favorite. The song in it. It still creeps me out. It's only just because Yeah. Love that movie. Love that movie. It comes at night and you know I'm looking. Rotten Tomatoes gave it as eighty seven, Metacritic seventy eight. I mean, do you look at any of that stuff, Ty, ever? Like the Metacritic and the Rotten Tomatoes and stuff? No, it, it's all bullshit. When you get to a certain yeah. point, like, you you trust the critics who you trust, so you sort of seek them out rather than, like, the aggregate. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, they overpraise everything. Everything they give high scores to is often dog shit and stuff that gets 50s or 60s. I end up loving, so I don't really go by that. Yeah, hmm. that's a fair statement. That makes sense. 
What, what I'm trying to think of other movies. I, it's so fun to have a movie critic on here, Isaac, and just see how, how terrible my opinion is based on how many of my movies he hates. Phantom um, Thread. Phantom Thread from 2017 is awesome. It's Daniel Day Lewis's last movie that he was in. Oh, good. It's the same director as Boogie Nights and um, There Will Be Blood. I think I don't even, it might be streaming, but it's it's awesome. It might be on HBO Go. What's it called? You, it's just Phantom Thread. Phantom um, from 2017. Thread. Phantom? Mad Max Fury, Mad Max Fury Road was awesome. That's one of the oh, best God, action movies I've seen in a while. Movie. Um, a good action movie that no one saw, no one saw. Twenty seventeen. It's called Black Hat with Chris Hemsworth. Black Hat or He's, Black Cat? Black Hat. Yeah, he plays a okay. hacker, which is ridiculous to envision Chris Hemsworth as a hacker. Oh, I did. I heard about that one. I remember that. No one saw it. Middling reviews, but it's the same director as Heat and The Insider and Collateral, huh. and it's just uh, it's just it's freaking dumb. Huh. Uh, best was, best sci- Give us a sci-fi one we should go watch that we probably haven't seen. Ty, and we've seen right, a me, lot of them. Well, have you seen? Let me see. Come on, man. Let me dig yeah, deep. We're like you, sci-fi nerds. No, huh? you guys, you, you guys keep the conversation going as I scroll. What back was here. the? What was the? Um, the Tom Cruise movie where it's like Groundhog's Day in a battle and it's the aliens. Uh, that's uh, I just, I just Kill Die Repeat. I thought that was pretty good. I didn't mind that I one. Hated it. Tell me you hated love it. I lo- oh, oh, I loved, loved it. it. I loved it. <laughs> you loved it. <laughs> the movie critic likes my movie. Yes. You loved it. I thought that was great. Yeah. Me and my buddy were talking about it. Anytime you have like the, the Groundhog Day type movie it's that was a great I like movie. stuff like that but yeah that was awesome and i really don't like tom cruise that much okay signs ty signs i like signs because I, I love Shyamalan. yeah um yeah signs is actually like signs is a funnier people than a funnier movie than people i think it's remembered for oh, yeah like happen. there's stupid lines in that movie that my brother and i quotes like and that's like the dumbest movie to be quoting when you they're running like, their house when they're running well, around they're, the house yeah. sleeping. Yeah. He, and he's talking about how, you know, he, he's like, you think a Scandinavian Olympian was on our roof and just stuff like that. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. What, what was it? What were they? See that? Vominos, move, children, move. Vominos. Vominos, children. Yeah, when he's screaming yeah, at the I TV. Do. That is yeah. early career. Early career. You like, you like Sham- Shyamalan. What about some of his uh, later stuff? So you have like uh, Lady was in he, the Water. Which? Um, the Village. I mean, did you like that stuff? Air, the Airbender one or whatever. That was him too. Airbender, I haven't seen. That's probably regarded as worse, but yeah, un, Unbreakable and Signs are probably my two favorite. But the, his his Glass trilogy or whatever you want to call it, yeah, Glass, yeah. Glass, yeah. it's Those it's it's games. good stuff that a lot of people yeah. didn't see. That a lot of people didn't see or take serious for that matter. Oh, S- S- Split was fantastic. I I yeah. love Split. I. I grew up watching though. He tried to make Avatar: The Last Airbender. Lucas, that show was amazing. Like I grew up on that. It was the so TV good. Did. And yeah, Mike would so, love it. Yeah, I was so excited that they made that into a movie, and it, he, it was awful. But I love that show. Um, you mentioned sci-fi. Did you guys see the uh, Brad Pitt one Ad Astra that came out in the last fall? No. Did you see, do I need to watch it or not? Tell me right now, Ty. It's nothing great, but it's, it's it's worth watching. It's pretty like just a depressed dude finding his dad in space. Like it's basically the same plot as Apocalypse Now, but in a sci-fi setting. So it's definitely worth watching. Obviously, better in the theater though, but yeah. worth watching for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had that on my list to watch, and then it kind of got it got. See, I, I try not to let critics decide what I'm going to watch, but sometimes. They just get so stomped in. It's like I'm not wasting my time going to a movie theater to see that. You know what I mean? And and it sucks because then sometimes I do that, and then I watch it on Netflix or something like ah crap, that was a great movie. Why didn't I go see it in the movie theater? Okay, right, so we, some, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, just a couple sci-fi movies because I'm scrolling through. Yeah, scroll. Remembering stuff that I've liked. Uh, AI, the Spielberg movie. Oh, that's um, a good one. I haven't seen that one. Have you it's, seen uh, Dread? Dread from 2012, not the Sylvester yeah. Stallone. Dread 3D. Uh, uh, with uh, with uh, it's dude, it's with our guy from uh, from the, the superhero Rings. one. Oh, uh, Carl, uh, Carl Urban. Carl Urban. 
Is that? Uh, it's badass. Is that like the one where he's in the tower? They're climbing yes. the tower, and he's the cop. Yes. Judge Dread. Yeah. Isaac. Okay, um, okay. Cersei Lannister uh, actor is the bat is the villain in that. Cersei. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I forget the name of the actor, but she's she's the villain. That's, that's a really good movie. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that one. The Thing from 1982, John Carpenter movie with Kurt Russell. I haven't seen it. Which one? The Thing. With the Kurt original Russell. Thing? Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah, that was a great movie. And they had yeah. the, the one that was based... What was the name of the movie? It was a prequel to The, the Thing. Um, oh, it, was a, it, was a re, it was a remake, though. The recent one from like six, seven years ago. It was, I think, it, but it was like a, it was a seek, it was a remake, but it was a prequel. It, it ended up leading right into the thing where the dog's running across the snow. In the very beginning thinking, of the, in the very you beginning thinking of the of, thing. Are you, you're not thinking of um, Prometheus, are you? No, 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 no. Hold okay. on. Uh, uh, Prometheus is a, is a prequel to Alien, isn't it? Right. Where, like yeah. all the aliens created. Yeah. Hold on. Now I got to Google this. Snowpiercer. Luke loved it. I hated it. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah, not bad. Yeah! Snowpiercer. <laughs> what were you stupid on that one, Isaac? It was, it was so dumb. Like, why would we create a train? Like, of all things, a train. <laughs> you totally missed the whole point of that whole movie if you're talking about the train. <laughs> Who takes care of the tracks? It's the symbol. It's, tell him by... It's the symbolism of the whole movie. I understand like, the symbolism. I understand the symbolism, but it's like at some point you got to think like the train's going to fall apart. And nobody's there, to or the tracks are going to fall apart. And nobody's there to fix them. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I haven't seen. I haven't seen, I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah, that's what happens at the spoilers. That's what happens at the end, right? Is that what happens? At, oh, whoops. I think so. Yeah. No. They right. get, oh, no they yeah, because there's ice on the tracks. That's right. See. There you no, go, it, it knocked the ice. You know what? I know what I was talking. This, this, this is this is ridiculous. It's, it's the classes of society. I get it. And the different as you move along. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, the thing um, was a commercial flop. What other moves? Uh, do you hate like? Um, I feel like a lot of critics hate. Um, like, do you hate Sandler movies? Do you hate? No. Um, I want to watch. Did you watch Uncut Gems? Yeah, it's great. That was crazy. I haven't seen it yet. Don't spoil it. No spoilers. No, that's a good one, dude. Sorry, that's a serious on, uh, role by Sam there. Netflix, May twenty fifth. You'll be able to watch it at home, Luke. All right, cool. Because I want. I want to see. I heard all kinds of good things about that one. Do you hate Will Ferrell? Lately, I feel like he needs like a like a renaissance. Like he's not in anything good anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He, he really he's, isn't. Yeah, so I mean, all of his old stuff is fine. You know, you watch it a thousand times, but I th I feel like he's gotten stale, or he's just not, I've, or or he's just bored, and he's like, you know what, I'm just not invigorated by anything anymore. So I'm just gonna uh, cash in these paychecks for these shitty movies, and you know, to call it a day. It's like yeah, uh, same thing with like Jim, awesome. like with Jim Carrey too. He used to be huge, and you know, now he can't find a movie that. He can land, you know. Well, he like he like went through some things. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Did, did you hear the stuff he was doing with like? No. His Probably. girlfriend for the longest time. Like he went out and hooked up with a bunch of prostitutes, and then he gave his wife or girlfriend or whatever something, and then he like just left her. He's like, oh, wait, gave her like a present, like an STD or like I think it was <laughs> or something, and then he just left her. He's like, well, I'm out. He's just like. Sorry, whatever. See ya. Here's here's syphilis. I'm on my way out. Yeah, I just bounced. Now he gets but, to grace the screens as the villain in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. That's where his career yeah. is at. Yeah. Watch that with my kids. He was good in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, how do you feel about Sonic the Hedgehog? Hi, Sonic the Hedgehog, go. I, I I made it through. I made it through, so that's <laughs> that's that's something, right? <laughs> Hi, Ty. Woody Woodpecker on Netflix. Go. I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's um, oh, oh God, sorry, Ty. Well, you get you guys get into Ozark. Me and my wife just binged oh, three seasons of that in about a week. I got we, through the first season. We are uh, 
we have been watching. We have three kids under nine, so it's like you can't watch that when they're up. So we're going two episodes a night for probably the last week. We're almost through end of, end of season two. It is the, it is fantastic. What was the HBO show, Luke? Um, Game the of Thrones. Outsider. The Outsider was amazing. I thought he was better in that than Ozark, and then they well don't ruin anything. But he was great. Yeah, <laughs> I like the actor in uh, what's Ben? Uh, what's his Ben Men, Menden? Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn. Yeah, they're talking. Actually, Maria's asking about uh, what's Ozark about. That's because you refuse. Critic, to critic, give here. us the rundown of Ozark. Your Bateman is just. He works. He's a he's an accountant, right? And he just he has to move some money for the mob, and he or a drug cartel. So he moves his family to the Ozarks, and he just alliances shifts like crazy throughout the whole show. And every episode is basically there's like one thing. It's almost like a race against the clock to solve this one or two things. So every episode is like balls to the wall. It's entertaining, but like there's no they don't flesh anything out. Like there's no breathing room. Like, and that's, that's what's cool about it. Like, it's so super entertaining. Like, I don't think it's a great show because it's just so crazy and manic. And that's what I like about it. But hell, I watched three seasons in 10 days and it's just him doing shit for the drug cartel and trying to launder their money for three seasons and some other characters be thrown in the mix. But it's another white person, you know, almost like breaking bad, you know, trying to keep his family safe and, you know, very, <laughs> Very good at yeah, yeah. Um, I got through the first season of that, and then I was like, "Meh." But yeah, if you don't, if you're not into it, by don't even bother finishing it. I would say, How, um, uh, Isaac, Isaac, we ahead. have a question from uh, DJ Yokely. Um, What's that? From I uh, YSN, I put this I up on the question. thing. Uh, DJ Yokely, owner of YSN, is asking: Are there any competi- uh, competitors that Ty has you'd like to ask him about? Ty, do you have any uh, competitors? I've got one that I hate that I'm not going to say because they're in Poland and we might have them on in the future, but no, we're not now after you made that. Cause how many juicy bars are, or how many smoothie bars are in Poland? So go ahead. Well, they, have t- they have tea and smoothies. They focus on okay. tea and smoothies, Ty. Any competitors, that guy, that guy in Poland, what else, Ty? That's oh, it, good. man. That's it. We, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to offend anyone. How do I dance around yeah. this question? Okay. No, it's, because, it's because DJ, uh, we had him on and we asked him about another. Um, what's Melodic Live, Luke? What would you consider them? Sports analyst type of people. Sports entertainment. So, so it's just. Yeah. So they got mad. He got mad at us and that's why he's asking that. So you don't have to answer anything you don't want to. It's yeah. fine, dude. That's yeah. that's more directed at us, Ty. Yeah. That's just being mean to us. I got Todd Creed. Todd Creed. Hi, guys. Pulp Rocks. So glad you opened your Borman Poland store. My entire family loves it. That's from Todd Creed. Good guy. Maria, our cousin, said pulp is the best. My kids are obsessed. So that's Thank good. You. Look at that. And then we got um, Maria. What do you? Uh, what's your? Do you know what they get when they go there? Are they getting food or what smoothie are they getting? Let's see if she is it the it. is it the kale, Maria? Is it the kale? The ka- what the kale pal? Is that what that's called? Ty kapow. Ka- 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 yes. Yes, that one. Hey, I, I literally, Isaac, I just drank all three of these while we were sitting here. They're all gone. Did you really? Jeez, oh man. <laughs> nice thousand <laughs> calorie. Uh, Down. Let's see here. What oh. else we got? Oh, we got Chris Persani. Jared Gash was watching from Australia. This has gone international. Um, Chris Persani, he's obviously a fan. Shows the only thing he keeps me saying during COVID quarantine. <laughs> he Marina. must be one of the. Did Maria oh, respond. Sorry, Maria said Maria. Ma- matcha match. Matcha match. Matcha match. Yeah, that's a good one. That's at a top. That's a top five bestseller. What nice. is that? Kale, almond milk, bananas, matcha green tea, and yogurt. Wow. So, matcha creeps me out, man. I'm not a real matcha guy, but what, it sounds good. Your, I love bananas. What's your average age? Is it mostly younger? Younger, like Maria. I know her kids are in college and high school. I mean, is it mostly younger? It's it's. It's different because Poland, we're still a new store, so we haven't really had the time to have this wide range of demographics. But Borman is Borman's crazy. Like it's anywhere from like fifteen to like seventy. Honest to God. But where, average, where are you at? In, where are you at in Poland? You're in Poland. You're at the where? Well, people people get upset when I say Poland, but as I mentioned, we couldn't call it Paul Borman the sequel 
Yeah. So it's in the it's in the it's in the same plaza as Marks. Okay, you're over by. Uh, oh God, Tiff, what's Tiffany the, Boulevard? Uh, yeah, right Tiffany next Boulevard. to the, right next to Mocha House and yeah. the old TGI Fridays. Yeah. Is that oh you're there? Are you next to the liver dialysis place? Yeah, we're we're right next to the vacant Fridays building, so we're right on the end. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I know I know whenever I go, you see like <laughs> the uh, liver place, and then you have the Mocha House, and then you have the Donut the classic, Place. Yeah, classic bakery, uh Catullo's. Oh yeah, it's um, all there. The Sherwin Williams, I think. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think there is. Well, that's that's a good that's a good location. I mean, that's a busy little spot over there for sure. So, um, and then where are you at in Bourbon? Creekside Plaza, right behind um, Handles and Stonebridge. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. You're in the two main shops there. Yeah, we we live here in Poland, Shelby and I, and um, we used to have to drive all the way to Canfield, and so happy you're right across the bridge now. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. But, it's, it's, um, just yeah. to tease it out, if we do another one, we're thinking about either on YSU or we might we might do like a truck and just like drive to like games or like you know wherever in the fall and keep it going like eight months out of the year or like parties and you know it'd be it'd be a more low key operation than opening up a third store. You could there's a guy in Willoughby he has his own pop truck he has his own store too, but it's something that I think could actually be done. So we'll yeah. see. Less overhead, I'm guessing, then. So, yeah, you'd be good. Wait, I have, oh, I have yeah. buddies uh, yeah, who has less. a food truck, and he just goes to, like, different bars that or um, breweries that don't offer food and just, um, yeah, posts up outside in their parking lot, and he loves it. So that would be sweet. Um, I, I got to complain about uh, – you have another question, Luke? No, Maria just said, yes, do a truck. That would be cool for parties. We'll see I have uh, bouncing around again. How did you feel about the last season of Game of Thrones? Ooh, good oh, you guys question. are you guys you guys are you guys are gonna hate me. You guys, don't yeah, you gonna, do this to me, Ty? No, 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 listen, listen. It was good. This is even I'll worse. Fight. This is even worse than you're imagining. You might be cool with me here. Okay. I'm like I'm not watching all of these seasons, so I I did a quick recap, read up what I had to know, and then just. Watched the last season without watching the other ones. Hated it though. Hated it so <laughs> bad. And and that's the thing. You don't need to watch the first six seasons of that show to know that the last season is dog shit. Oh, it's terrible. But here's the thing. The first what was it? I think it went seven seasons. The first the sixth season was amazing. It was incredible. And if you ever want to just go watch it, go watch one through six. And then anybody – I would tell anybody who ever starts a show, do not watch the last season because the first six were so good. And then they just – those directors and writers or whoever they were that were going to make the Disney film after that um, – they were going to make Star. They were going to do a Star Wars movie. And they were they, going to do a Star Wars out. prequel. So they just rushed through it. I swear. And then they were like, "We're out of here. We're done." HBO is like, "You guys can make movies if you want to to finish it off because there's so much more you can do with this." And they're like, "Yeah, we're done. We're we're out. We're going to go do Disney." And then thank God Disney said, "Get out of here." Everybody's pissed at you because you screwed up Game of Thrones. But man, well, that was so bad. And I went back and watched like the six or seven key episodes that you know in. Even not watching the show with social media, you know all the spoilers going in. So I didn't want to restart it because I knew I wouldn't be surprised. And obviously, watching it from yeah. the beginning, you, you still get all that character development. That's what makes it fun. But yeah, even just watching that last season as as a as a non fan, but just wanting to watch it and be in the oh. conversation about it, I could just tell it was so rushed for just from episode to episode mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never seen anything more rushed before in my entire life. It was terrible. they could have done three seasons, and that's yeah. and that's the thing is like. They were able to – yeah, it was just so rushed compared to the first six seasons. They had so many – so much character development in the first six seasons that they just like – that just disappeared. But they were like, yeah, we're not going to do it. We're not even going to talk about that. That's just done. It, it and, was David David Benoff and D.B. Weiss. Benoff and Weiss were the, the directors and producers of those last – that yeah. last season. Uh, and I think they've, they've done a so bunch bad. of stuff. And that's the thing now. Like, I think the sweet spot for a show to end, whether it be that or whatever else, is like four or five seasons. Even though I don't love Ozark, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, they, I don't know if they, if they could do much else. 
maybe one more season max, but like these shows that go on six, seven seasons and then just run out of ideas. Those are the ones that, uh, you know, end up, end yeah. up sucking. They're Walking trying to squeeze dead. the life out of it. Oh, the Walking Dead. Walking awesome. Dead. I love the first couple of seasons and man, I stopped. I can't take it anymore. Um, did you, you said you liked Breaking Bad, right? That was great. I thought that was awesome. That was just enough. They didn't do any filler or anything like that. Yeah. And it makes me want to, I just, I don't have the time, but I, I, I hear that a lot of people like trust or that what, say, they say better call Saul is actually better. Oh, it's, um, it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It is so good. I've been trying to get Isaac to watch it. I, I haven't. It, it is almost better than Breaking Bad. And I've never seen that about a prequel before, but that actor, uh, what's his name? Uh, Odenkirk or whatever it is. He is, he's amazing yeah. in that movie, in that TV show. I, I love the character Saul Goodman. And I, um, I think I did try and start watching like the first two or three episodes and I couldn't get into it, but I did I try. Try it, Isaac. Really? Uh, I think Lost? I... Lost? Did you like Lost? Loved it. The last season again, a couple good episodes, but they botched it. But I still have a soft mm-hmm. spot in my soft spot in my heart for that show just because I that was the show for me when that was on. Like that was it. That was yes. the show. Yep, yep. same. That's we were just we were, we were there with you. They like with that show. They that's a perfect example of they like squeeze the life out of it to try and get as much money as they could because like the fifth and uh, I forget how many seasons there were but there were two seasons there it was just pointless crap that was happening that had no point at all six seasons three and four I remember being the best um five was okay and six the last season had some good stuff in it but for the most part it yeah. was kind of a they kind of dropped the ball. Mm. Yeah, I think, I, I think I, five was really bad. I think you're right. And then the, the I'm gonna have to rewatch that. Cool. I want to rewatch that sometime because I, I watched the first. I rewatched two, and then I ran out of time and got into other stuff. I should rewatch it all the way because that's that. That was a good one. Speaking of Lost, um, the Leftovers, which was only three seasons, the same yes. writer. It's it's fantastic. It yeah, I never watched it on HBO. Yeah. Never Jennifer watched Hitchens it. Husband. I forget his name. Isn't it the main character? That's a good. That's oh, a good yeah. one. The first Justin season Rowe. was amazing. The first season. Season, was season one is a little bit rocky, and then they were going to cancel it after season one, and then there was I this like big the first season too. Yeah, it it the latter half is great, but season two and three season three are just some of the best TV I've seen. And again, it was only three seasons because a lot of people just didn't watch it, but it was it was that was awesome when it just aired. And then Watchmen, the same guy that did um, Leftovers and Lost. He's yeah. done. It's it just one. It's it's worth watching if you like comic book. I'm surprised you guys haven't seen it. Have you watched the movie on or the show with about the the evil superheroes on Prime? I have not seen. I don't. The boys. I, the boys. The boys. I think that's the boys. Called. Yeah, that's no, a good. One. I don't. Aside from the stuff we've mentioned and like classic HBO stuff like Sopranos and The Wire and Lost, and I don't watch that much TV just because I feel like there's so much out there. There's so it's. It's impossible to pick a show. I just I'd rather watch yeah. a good two hour. I'd rather watch thirty or forty good two hour movies in a month than binge watch all this shit that you know. Yeah. <laughs> so no Str- 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 Stranger Things. I've never seen it. I don't think I'd like it. Oh, it's like, kind of like the Goonies, but it is kind of yeah. like the Goonies. It's very Goonie ish. Um. Yeah. Because it's just so fun, just firing everything we know at him. I know, I love it though. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely six, love it. We're in the sixty-minute mark of us asking him movies we like, <laughs> and feeling and feeling glorified when he he says he likes it. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. The critic said he likes my movie. Well, we have we have Andrew DePaulo coming on on uh, Thursday. Ty, you're gonna have to watch because we have we already have questions. So he's a you know he's a meteorologist. He's a big supporter of the area of local local businesses and stuff like that. So we have we have some doozy questions for our local weather guy. I mean, I I'm cannot sure. wait to, to drop some of these questions on him on Thursday. Yeah, yeah it's he'll be good. fun. Oh, he'll it's going to be freaking hysterical. Some of the questions we have. Um, so. I have I have one more question. Well, I guess yeah, we can we can go, but um, we can't do I, this for two hours. I know, right? I gotta, go, I gotta go watch the rest of Ozark. <laughs> um, but I guess leaving here, um, are there any anything else you want to talk about coming to Pulp? Like any new flavors or anything coming to your stores? No, we. 
they're sort of a, and you know, I don't control any decisions because it's all franchise stuff. Oh, that's our right. Big, I didn't think about yeah, that. Yeah. Our big menu change happened last summer. The four new smoothies, the blended bowls are really good. A lot of people still haven't tried them yet. I need to try um, that. Yeah, I haven't. It, what is it? Just, it's, they're blended. They're like smoothie bowls. It's like a smoothie texture, but um, there's toppings on top. Ooh, so nice. it's all, yeah. Um, and then we have the premium blend smoothies. There's like a ginger one that's really good. Uh, the ultimate acai, strawberry basil, uh, an avocado one that's really good. But um, we had a couple new wraps. But hopefully, hopefully the franchise implements some newer stuff in the next, you know, I don't know, next couple, you know, year or two as, as things get, um, you know, just sort of catch up with the trends and everything. But I love running it. Um, this the Poland store has been a challenge because the virus hit and we, we opened February for February four. Brutal. Yeah. But we've, we've been doing okay. Um, especially with, as the weather gets a little bit better here. So I think we'll be okay. It's just, it's just for viewers or people who it's, you know, we're doing our best we can to keep the, the store sanitary and clean and that's all we can do. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah, you opened up February, you're in the Marks Plaza or whatever you want to call that over Tiffany Plaza, Marks Plaza. As well as out on 224, out in Can- heading out to Canfield. And, uh, you know, we got to get um, – uh, I'm going to invite you, Ty, to uh, – I have a networking group. Um, uh, it's it's called uh, – what's it called? Northeast Ohio uh, Networking. We'll get you on there. There's a bunch of business owners on this free. You know, it's just we meet once – you know, you come hang out and introduce yourself just to get your name out in Poland. I have a lot of Poland people there. If you'd be interested in that, we can invite you over there. You know, we want to see the local businesses – uh, survive, thrive. I mean, you know, it, it is a four four five one four area code over there, correct? It is. I tried to tell the the, the lady that yep. who was, old and she was she was fighting me to the death on that we're not actually in Poland. So I just gave her that zip code and let her Boom. let her go. To, zip code. Let her, yeah. let her sleep on that zip code. So 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 yeah. So you are part of Poland as far as I'm concerned. Um. So so we'll we'll get you over here. We're you know I hope you know we'll we'll spread the word as much as we can. Um, you know, we, like I said, I, I, I appreciate you opening up in February because I switched jobs over to the current thing. And Isaac actually quit his me job too. and joined me as loan officers, which is what we're doing now, which is why we're the MLO yeah. bros. And it was like, he switched and boom, we just got hit. You know what I mean? And we're surviving because rates are low right now, but it's still, it's still, it's a scary time. You, you have employees that want to pay. You want to have to pay. You have bills you have to pay. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring the boys over there sometime. My, me and my kid, the kids, then we'll grab some drinks and support you. So um, I appreciate you know, it for sure. Are there any, uh, are there any local companies or businesses that you think we should try and talk to and have on here that you're a fan of in the Youngstown or Poland area, wherever? Love the, um, I don't know him that well, but I love the, I love the guys over at, um, or the guy, I think his name is Matt over at, um, Branch Street in Canfield. Love their coffee. Yeah, we talked to that guy. We need to have him yeah. on, Luke. Um, like, yeah. Matt. Tell Matt. Oh my God. It's one of those things where I don't even want to name people because I, I know I'm going to leave someone out. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I don't, I got I don't, you. Yeah. Leave somebody out of our wonderful podcast. We're up to five right now. <laughs> um and then uh yeah we'd love uh, yeah we'd love if you have any suggestions let us know we'd love more people like i said we have uh we have meteorologist uh andrew DePaulo coming on thursday we have Maludic, <laughs> austin Maludic coming uh, next week sometime which is going to be awesome um, I hope, uh, Isaac, we should get some questions from DJ Yokely, uh, when we have Maludic on, that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I, I got nothing else. Okay. Final, final thing, final thing, final question for me. And then I'm out. Let's do it. Star Wars, Ty. Let's talk Star Just, Wars. Not, not my, not my thing. I've seen them all. <laughs> listen, listen, the one. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, don't you dare say the last Jedi is. I no, will hang off Rogue. this computer if yeah, you Rogue say the last Rogue. Jedi is. Rogue One's awful. I do the last Jedi. Oh, I, I, thank you. I I I didn't like I, it. I do I do mess with the last Jedi. I like it. <sighs> All right, I have to go. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> the last Jedi. Oh man. I'm gonna drink the rest of my kale. I wouldn't be doing um, my job unless I was going out on a disappointing note with the. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> with the, nerds, with the Star on, Wars nerds. Are you on Twitter? Because I'm going to go troll you on Twitter as soon as I hang up on it. Oh, yes. Man. Ty <laughs> underscore Landis. Ty so underscore right Landis. That, right that on the bottom. Yeah. Where can, uh, where can the people find you, Ty? It's Ty underscore Landis. I'm on Instagram, but I'm probably not going to let a lot of people... You know, I have to, I have to, I have to know the person from the follow me. But find me at Pulp, man. I'm there pretty much Monday through you Saturday. Too, um, and I'm on, I'm on Twitter a lot, so probably those two places. And WFMJ cool. Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings, cool. WFMJ. Yeah. yeah. This week, this week, I don't know what I'm talking about. There's this movie that just came out on HBO. It just um, it played a, it played at Sundance Festival last January. Um. It's called uh, Bad Education. True story about Hugh Jackman plays like a superintendent who I heard about move, that. moves money around and basically schools the screws the school system over by manipulating their money. It's a true story from 2002. It's on. It's streaming on HBO now. It's called Bad Education. It's really good. Wow. All right. I'm gonna check it yeah. out now too. All right. Well, well, yeah. Thanks. Go ahead, Isaac. Everybody, go uh, go to Pulp. Get some smoothies. And um, if you guys are ever thinking about purchasing a home, look us up. Look us up. There's I'm fine, guys. Thanks a lot, Ty. We appreciate let's, you coming on. Hey, and, uh, let's do this again. Absolutely, man. A- absolutely. We, we, we got- I was going to write down more movies we can fire at you and you can tell us <laughs> what they suck about. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Uh, all right, yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. And.